Hi Westlight, hope you all are well. As many of you know, Megan and I are about to have a baby boy. And recently we've been thinking about what to name him. And upon further reflection, I've realized that names have two associated facts with them. The first being that names reveal who you're connected to. So for example, you think about my cousin Daniel, right? His father's name is Danny, and so their names are intertwined and their names are connected. The second aspect about names is that they can often change the way that you interact with others as well as how others interact with you. So for example, if we look at Pastor Katz, his name is Katsuya, and it's a very Japanese name. And you can imagine him putting his name down for a dine-in at a Japanese restaurant, and maybe the host or the hostess is going to speak Japanese to him because he or she saw his name is Japanese. And you compare that to somebody who puts down their American name like myself, I put down Tim and the host is probably not going to speak Japanese to me. These are just some subtle ways of how names could really impact others and reveal to others who we're connected to. I think this can also work with nicknames as well. So in high school, I went to this summer camp called Mount Hermon and many of you have been to Mount Hermon. And my childhood friend also went to Mount Hermon with uh, me as well. And his name was also Tim. And so his nickname at Mount Hermon was Tall Tim because he has always been taller than me. And as you can guess, my nickname was Tiny Tim. It wasn't the most uh, complimentary name, but I stuck with it. And so everybody called me Tiny or Tiny Tim. And these two facts that I told you about, um, they, they rang true as well. Whenever, whenever anybody said, why is your nickname Tiny or Tiny Tim? And their friends would always say, or my friends would always say, it's because his friend, his childhood friend is Tall Tim. And so it reflected how me and my friend Tim were always connected. And the second aspect is I remember playing basketball at Mount Hermon and because I was named Tiny Tim, I would, I don't know if it was because of the fact or the pressure that my name was Tiny Tim, but I would always be known as the one who would swipe low at the balls um, to intercept the, or to steal the, the dribble. I would never post up. I'd always leak out for a fast break because I knew I was shorter and faster than everybody else. And in contrast, Tim, uh, my friend Tim, tall Tim, would always post up and he would always be picked first because he was a lot taller. And so that was uh, another way how it influenced the way I interacted with others as well as how others perceived me and my friend Tim just because of this nickname. There's an individual in the Bible whose name is John and he's a disciple. And the first four books of the New Testament, New Testament is often referred to as the Gospels. And John wrote one of these Gospels. And I want us to turn our attention to John 21, 7. And this reads, Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. So I want to back up there. Did you, did you catch it? It says, Then the disciple whom Jesus loved. And many scholars link or identify this disciple whom Jesus loved. They identify this person to John. And so John, in his own book, is not referring to himself as John, but he's referring to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And he didn't only do this once, he did this actually six times in the book of John. And remember I told you how that there are three other Gospels, so Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, whenever they refer to themselves in their own book, in one of the Gospels, they referred to themselves as Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They didn't do the same exact thing that John did, where John referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, I don't think John did this out of a place of arrogance or feeling uh, overly prideful. I think for him, it, it came from a self-assurance, a place of confidence, knowing that God loved him so deeply, knowing that he was his beloved. So my encouragement to you isn't to explicitly refer to yourself 
um, to your friends as I'm God's beloved. Say to your family, hey, I'm, I'm God's beloved. But maybe the uh, encouragement or recommendation here is to model or mimic the type of confidence that John had knowing that he was God's beloved. What if we were to interact with our friends implicitly knowing that we, our identity is shaped from being God's loved one, that we are truly and deeply cared for by the Almighty God? And I wonder if this would change the way that we interact with others, and it would also reflect to others who we're connected to, that we might be connected to something greater than this, that we might be connected to our Lord and our God. This is my encouragement to you. I hope it's a blessing. Please walk in this world knowing that we are God's beloved, and uh, stay safe and take care.